I am here with actor slash dancer Andrew Perosi, who is currently starring on Broadway in Disney's Frozen. Before we talk about Frozen, though, let's talk a little bit about when you first decided you wanted to uh, do dance professionally and, and where it led you. I know you've been in a ton of stuff. Um, yeah, I started when I was four. Uh, and it was actually sort of just uh, my mom, I can credit it all to her, because she, uh, I was sort of a child, like an undiagnosed ADD child, Okay. and uh, I was involved in a lot of different stuff. I was playing piano. She just kind of enrolled me in all activities. She's like, try music, try dance, try soccer, try um, football, even as I got older. Uh, so, yeah, so I started when I was four, but I latched on to dance because I think it gave me, it like fed more than just my impulse, my ADD, mm -hmm. uh, you know, attention problem. Um, and it gave me something like a voice uh, to, to actually speak sort of what I'm feeling. Um, and so, yeah, so I've, I've chased and uh, really evolved dance in my life uh, to be sort of my voice. Did you ever run into any kind of bullying because you were into dance at a young age? Oddly enough, not as much as people probably think. Mm -hmm. Um, born and raised in New Jersey, so I mean, I lived fairly close. I was only 50 miles from New York City. Right. Um, so I don't know. Like I, I also I think my size might have had something to do with it. I'm a bigger man, mm -hmm. so I think you know, I was never really bullied. There was a few times on the football field where like you know some they'd be like, oh, twinkle toes, you know, and they try to like say things, but. It didn't matter because Until they going, got tackled, right? Exactly because <laughs> yeah, because I would basically come and tackle them and it'd be like, yeah, Twinkle Toes is going to tackle you because yeah. I went to dance class and um, you know I'm my agility is high and you know yeah. so yeah I well that's great that that didn't happen to you for the most part yeah for the most part I was never really bullied so I didn't have to face that kind of mm -hmm. um, I for me it was more yeah there was there was only one kid in middle school who was on the wrestling team that that tried to bully me. But when I put it into perspective, I was like, man, we wear the same tight clothes, right. and you roll around on the ground with a bunch of guys. Right, right. I put my hands on girls. So you tell me who's the, like, you know. And you're on Broadway now. Where is he? Well, I don't want to say where he is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't a question. That was just, Good. A, just some shade from the interview. Some shade. <laughs> so um, once you did it in your youth, did you go to college for it, or did you um, pursue an actual different career path major? I was being encouraged to go to college by a lot of my teachers at mm -hmm. school, but I think that was also because they didn't know my life too much outside of school, which mm -hmm. was actually, like I went to Princeton Ballet School uh, starting at the age of eight. Okay. Um, and then between that and Kathleen Academy of Dance in Hillsboro, mm -hmm. I was, my time was like really invested in dance, um, especially as like uh, when I got into middle school and high school, I stopped doing football and I started really focusing on dance. Mm -hmm. So. Um, for me, it was like, yes. So I didn't, I kind of, when I hit high school, mm -hmm. I had this, this opportunity to audition for So You Think You Can Dance, right? And I went out and I auditioned and it kind of set me into a place of like, okay, I see what's happening on the West with dance. I know what I want in New York. I want to come and perform on Broadway. Right. Um, and then I was also dancing with Princeton Ballet School, and they were sort of being like, hey, you can come feed into our company, American Repertory Ballet, if you wanted to do company life um, right away. And so part of me was like, I definitely don't want to go to college. I don't, I don't want to invest any more time in really education for, because I feel that I feel strongly about my talents. Mm -hmm. And my mom was really my biggest supporter for that. And so she said, well, then I support you. As long as you work hard and every day you go to your auditions and you show me improvement, you know, you can go for it. So right. she gave me the freedom to sort of right out of high school, go right, come right into New York. I would take the train every day, show up at 8 a.m., mm -hmm. early up to those sign-up auditions, the non-equity ones where you have to. Yeah. And for, you know, three solid months I auditioned and I booked my first job within three months, so. And if you were coming in on New Jersey Transit and had to be heard eight, you probably left Ooh. at midnight the night before, yes. right? Yeah, you <laughs> got that sure one alarm. And then yeah, you that's right. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what was your first professional gig that you booked uh, once you came to New York? Um, actually, my first professional gig in New York mm -hmm. was called the Manhattans. Okay. It was, um, oh man, I cannot recall her name, but uh, she was a rocket, and we performed for Rosie O'Donnell's birthday celebration as our first debut and then the second was at Carnegie Hall with the gay men's choir Very up nice. in New York yeah and that was my first professional job 
Then you also, you've gone out on tour, you were in the Moving Out tour. Yes, yeah. then, I, then I sort of, from there, I, uh, things opened up and I did um, a, a regional production of West Side Story, mm -hmm. then Moving Out, which was my first touring job, um, and then uh, Dirty Dancing, which actually led me to get my equity card. Very cool. Going out on tour with Moving Out, what was it like for you? Had you traveled a lot in your, in your youth and in your high school years, or was this your first opportunity to really get outside of Jersey? Yes, yeah, Moving Out was really my first, and I call that my college years. Uh -huh. Like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, did you go to college? And I'm like, kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of. It was more like the college of life and hard performance. Knocks, yeah. of hard knocks, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, under the direction of Twyla Tharp. Hmm. She was easy, I understand. She's so easy. Oh, Twyla. Clear piece of cake. So easy. <laughs> no, her, well, her brilliance is mm -hmm. that she expects nothing but the best from right. everybody she works with. And that actually was some of the best education I could have had coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, I had not made it on season two of So You Think You Can Dance. And then Twyla Tharp was like, I want him for moving out. And so I was like, all right, I can't be that bad. Right. Right. Like if I, if I didn't make that, whatever, but now like this legend of our, right. of one of the most inspiring people in, as to why I wanted to pursue dance is it saying, hey, I want you to be in this company of a show that I had seen when I was 16. Mm -hmm. I saw Eddie, I saw um, John Celia, Celia uh, do Eddie. And mm -hmm. I like literally in my mind, it was like, I'm going to do that right there. Like, that's what I want to do. And by the age of 19, I was doing that. So then I was like, cool. Wow. This is this, you know, hard work pays off. I yeah. had that like momentum and that feeling. Um, but soon thereafter, I was surrounded by, because I started touring and I started working more in depth with a lot of people in the industry. And I learned very quickly that what a, what a privilege and an opportunity it is to, to be able to book work so quickly, right. you know, out of high school. And you also danced uh, in a number of things. You were in Peter Pan Live, you yes. were in Hairspray, Hairspray both of live. those live versions of yeah. musicals, um, which is great exposure. Yes, those I, I credit Rob Ashford. Mm -hmm. um, he and I have had a long working relationship ever since the Oscars. Um, and, you know, I, I'm so grateful for somebody who, un, like, who trusts mm -hmm. just not only my ability as a performer, but trusts that in the moment, professionally, I can do something that is you know, that the expectation is just, yep, he's got it. Yeah. And uh, because of that, I've had so many great opportunities, like Peter Pan Live, mm -hmm. Hairspray Live. Um, we, as a matter of fact, Frozen. Yeah. Frozen. Well, Rob Ashford asked me to come audition for the ensemble track, um, one of the ensemble members. And I, um, I did. Mm -hmm. Made final callbacks. And then they had to cut me. And that was, I actually thought it was kind of end of the road. And I was like, oh, no worries. And Rob's like, there's plenty more things in the future. You know, I... You know, I adore you. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then a few days later, Disney was like, hey, do you want to come audition for Sven? So, and that was a cool challenge that we could talk about if you... Yeah, we will, right, bef right before we get to that, you were also in Taylor Swift's music video. Yes, yeah, another an, Yeah, another little yeah. known performer who yeah, no Taylor one's ever Swift. heard of. Yeah, she's a, she's a nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll, she'll come into her own at some point. At some point, you know. Yeah. Um, but no, that was fun. Uh, so while I was in L.A., um, with my agency there, I was able to work a lot with some really prolific and awesome choreographers, mm -hmm. including like Mandy Moore, Tice Diorio. Um, and yeah, yeah, Taylor was fun. Um, that was a good time, the VMAs. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, you know, that's a lot of exposure for you too, which is great. Yeah, that and was a, yeah. Now finally, you are portraying Zvatan on uh, in Frozen, which yeah. for those of you who have not seen the show, or have seen the show and seen this young man's face in the playbill, then we're like, where is he on stage? You actually play the reindeer. Yeah. Which is kind of amazing because it's got to be physically unbelievably challenging. It is, yeah. Um, I, <clears throat> let's back up for a second. Okay. <laughs> let's back up. Let's go back to Los Angeles. Okay. After Dirty Dancing, I was in Los Angeles for like a solid eight years mm -hmm. um, where I also met my well I met my wife on tour actually with moving out but um, while we were in Los Angeles we got married we had two kids uh, and I learned while I was there not only I was fitness training um, celebrities that's a whole nother story mm -hmm. but uh, while I was there I also started uh, investigating acrobatics and um, hand balancing okay for circus work mm -hmm. uh, and in that training I like was able to teach myself an ability that I was like, cool, this is, I don't know how I'm going to use this. I, maybe I'll join Cirque du Soleil. I don't know. 
performance has no end, really, in my in my field of spectrum. And so Absolutely. I was like, so uh, there was that moment in life. And then came Frozen auditions for Ensemble, which was very intense. Uh, vocally, we had to like be prepared to sing some really, really hard stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then physically, the dancing was intense. Rob Ashford, is he does really high energy, really, really connected, grounded dancing that is like full out. So that I had all been prepared for. Then they said, hey, we'd like you to come audition for Sven. It means you'll work with Michael Curry. So Googling the heck out of it, mm -hmm. I find Michael Curry. I see his work, and I'm like, wow, this, this is a big question mark, like a huge question mark. So like, talk about taking a big leap into the unknown. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love this kind of adventure. Like, I love challenges. So yeah, show me what it is. So they brought me to New York, and I auditioned on the stilts with Michael Curry basically demonstrating, uh, and also a wonderful man named Lorenzo Pisoni, mm -hmm. um, great movement coordinator, great, great, brilliant director mind movement, yeah. Um, but he, uh, they, ex they explained what the stilts were, and that was the audition. And so I saw that and was like, wait, quadruped, movement, hand balancing, I think I got this. Um, also, the, the bottom stilts happened to fit like uh, roller skates, mm -hmm. and I, all throughout my time in California and growing up, I roller skate all the time, snowboarding, skating. Like I, I was that ADD. So child. yeah, you were always, already physically prepared for all of it. Yes, I don't know about prepared because that was another journey that <clears throat> really had to get me like uh, training wise, mm -hmm. just to be prepared for the amount of shows that we were doing. But um, I was definitely prepared for the challenge of getting to play in these things, you know, in the stilts. And so um, yeah, Disney took a really beautiful risk, and they said cool, we like what you do with it. Put me in a studio with Lorenzo and said, come up with movement and things and you know, figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and talk about like the most fulfilling creative outlet you could be you know, handed. So that, that for me was like, that was the next step in going like, oh, it's one thing to portray an, a character. It's a whole nother thing to discover an entirely new way of, of performing it. Right. You know, literally you don't see my face the whole show. You think, is there a real reindeer? Or at least if you do, that means I'm doing my job right. Now, it's got to be even more challenging that you have to trust your co-stars to actually kind of lead you in the right direction a little because you kind of have tunnel vision, right, when you're, when you're in costume? Very much so, yeah. Yeah, the, the amount of trust between not just myself and um, Jelani Aladdin, mm -hmm. who plays Kristoff, but myself and... Um, everybody on stage is unique because uh so i the tunnel the vision is like probably about six to eight inches mm -hmm. wide and it actually has a screen in front of it so it's not like i can really see i see uh as if like if somebody had really bad nearsighted vision then they pulled their contacts out or their glasses off it's sort of like that it's very blurry because of the <clears> screen <throat> um, and i can make out like um, shadows and people's legs and their hips up to the sometimes their chest depending on how high i lift my head mm -hmm. um so really it's about like we built in sort of a communication system and the other trick is i use some shadows see how i can see my shadows on the table yeah you know that i can tell where his ear is based on where the shadow is so it was a it was a cool exploration of senses. Is it incredibly disorienting after the show when you come out of the of the costume and have um, to refocus? It's kind of like scuba diving. Mm -hmm. The more you do it, the more you feel uh, acclimated. Mm -hmm. So not only to the drop in and the adjustment in the, the you know in the the temperature, the water, all of that, but right. then also like getting out and being circulating your blood, circulating everything right. back to it. So yeah, I, I would imagine say it's got to be pretty hot in there too. It's oh man, it is warm. Yeah, I can really imagine. Warm in there. Yeah, we even have our own ACs actually. Really? Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. When you do the curtain call, do you come out as yourself or do you stay in costume? Um, uh, curtain call, I come out as Sven. You do? Yes. Wow, that's crazy. Yes. People must be blown away when, when you walk out and they're like, wow, this is an actual person. You well, know, well, theori well they theoretically, see it they see it, yeah. yeah. So the fun thing about it is, um, yeah, no, they, yeah, we, when we do the curtain call, I come out of Sven, and that was something that, um, of course, Disney decided, but mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because I always think to myself, maybe we can challenge people to start reading their playbills. If it, 
if the mystery is that intriguing and uh -huh. they're like, wait, what am I witnessing? Because most people will come up and if, if after the show, if they're like, you are Sven? And they're like, oh yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was an animatronic. Uh, yeah. I thought it was like, you know, and I kind of think, I'm like, okay, I mean, I, I don't know if that's a compliment, but I appreciate that you don't think it was just one person. Right. You know, like it's almost, but it's funny because to me, Sven is like a, um, an old school airplane. It's all pulleys and levers. Mm -hmm. And that's what the genius behind Michael Curry is. He, he came up with something and he said to me when we were, when we were mounting it on my body and just saying like, you know, I wanted, I wanted to make something that could feel totally like a second skin mm -hmm. so that the puppeteer can fully embrace the, the character. And I was like, brilliant. I'm going to do whatever I can to mm -hmm. be in that costume and be that character. So, um, and Jelani was the other half of that because of communication, because of saying like, okay, I pretty, I pretty much was like, how does my dog interact with me? Mm -hmm. So then let me just be my dog in, 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 in a little bit of a role playing game and flip that with him, with Jelani mm -hmm. as a mountain man. And then how would we interact as, right. as his reindeer, his pet reindeer and his BFF and yeah. And what is that physically like? And so the physicalities really started to help guide where I was going to be on stage as well. Have your daughter seen the show? Five times. What Six do they times. think? Oh, they love it. What did they think the first time? Did they believe that was you inside the reindeer? They did because they were so they were so investigative and curious uh -huh. that uh, I had to keep them along the journey. Yeah. I all the way from the moment I first got to see even like prototype Sven to real Sven yeah. to all of the creations of it. So I um, yes, they loved it, but they also I think for them this is so silly. You know what their favorite part of the show is? What? H um, uh, Huga. The, the, the number uh, where that Oaken comes out and sings. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and sincerely, that is the most, that is their favorite part, not because, like, of anything else other than he said hi to my daughter the first night that they saw the show. So you don't get any cool points yeah, at all for being on Broadway nothing. and Frozen? Nothing. Wow. Nothing. I get nothing. <laughs> They're no. out of the will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. They're done. <laughs> They're done. Cut off. Cut off. No, they, they do. When I go, it's so cute. When I go back to um, Phoenix, mm -hmm. where they live, I, uh, I'll go to their school and their friends oh, yeah that's, Sven. Oh, that's, that's amazing Sven. so it's kind of fun because the little ones identify with me more as Sven than as my own person but that's fine it's yeah. fine they'll grow out of it right do you get to go uh, back often or are you are you pretty much doing all eight shows a week so uh i have to be at the theater all eight shows a week i do mm -hmm. six but um i go back probably once a month um, okay i try to get back there or they're coming out they're coming out very soon end of this week very nice so you'll be spending the holiday as a family which yeah. is great Thank you so much, Andrew, for taking the time to meet up with me. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Brian. Fellow yeah. Jersey boy. Yes. And I, I very much appreciate you taking the time. Awesome. Take care. Have a nice holiday season. Thank you. You too.